<laughs> don't know, don't care. Hey, Scott. <coughs> Who did? You did? Just now? Oh, Mr. Jones. Not much. How are You're you doing? About how you lock it up and you lock it. I've had better weeks. Oh, it's only Monday. Yeah, this one kind of carries over. <laughs> Where's the last week? Eh? All right, fair enough. Hey, Larry, Nathan? thank you for having you guys take care of that on Fair Oaks. Well, there should be one. Well, you can always call one. It's not like there's none around. Have somebody do it. I, I called, I think, Thursday. Can we get somebody to fill in these potholes down uh, Green Ridge? Now, now you've seen On Fair Oaks. <laughs> That's They're home switching home. things, things around on me. Huh? They're switching around on me. I'm going to get all Why is off. this? Mr. Hess has a slideshow for us. He has a what? A slideshow. Yeah. About the. Oh. It was a small job. Well, there was room for That's Justin nice over there. Mount Vernon. Yeah. That big one right in the center. Uh, yeah, but they're gonna... yeah, There's but his you name. It's, it's, We're going to confuse him. I'll call I hit it Mr. one Paul night. That was they were already a lot. No. I can't. I can't believe that I locked it up like four knocks. Oh yeah. boy! <laughs> Did you lock your keys? <laughs> Everybody I talk to, I'm gonna get in there. Awesome. Oh no. Oh okay. <laughs> All right. We ready? Really? You left the car door open? I call the Norton City Council Committee Work Session meeting for Monday, May 6, 2019 to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silent reflection. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You can see this. Would the clerk call the roll, please? <laughs> Mr. Gaynor? Here. Mr. McLone? Here. Mr. Carrot? Here. Mr. Towsley? Here. Ms. Whipke? Here. Mr. Pilot? Here. Mr. Kernan? Here. Under public comment, um, we're going to start off with uh, Mr. Hess. Our street superintendent who has a presentation on the street sweeper for us. Go ahead. You're welcome. Um, we have uh, done some demo work on um, sweepers, uh, looking to the possibility of buying in the near future. And uh, we wanted to show you the effectiveness of the one that we're very interested in. Uh, we took it up to Mount Vernon and also on Johnson Road. Uh, two bad areas if you've ever been up there, and I'm sure you have, that uh, can show us how. Uh, and I'm just going to get right into it. If anybody has any questions, just feel free to ask me anytime. Um, we'll do some befores. <coughs> Mr. Hess, can you put your microphone just a little closer to your mouth? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. This is all new, right? Yeah. Got in the big seat here. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So this is Mount Vernon right here, and Ow. that shows. Uh, if everyone got a look at that, that shows a before. And this is going to be, we'll try to make this short and sweet. It'll show, it'll, it'll speak for itself. <coughs> this is the same, same gutter, different direction. And this will show the, uh, the actual sweeper. I'm sorry about the angle. We could not straighten it up. But this shows the sweeper actually, uh, it's a pretty heavy debris field. It's uh, cut through it pretty easily. Uh, this is a regenerative, which basically means it's a big vacuum cleaner. The uh, broom will take the, uh, the material, loosens it up, throws it into a a little barrier that lines it up with the head, which picks it up and, and takes it away. Let 
This is a Timco. I believe Mr. Gaynor was there. He could also attest to uh, what a, a pretty good job it did for us. I was in the car right behind it. So Tim, yeah. So it looks good from behind, too. Now, is that consistent with what other cities are using a Temco? Uh, it, came, um, it came with some recommendations of other cities that have used it. Sometimes hmm. the uh, manufacturers, some of the companies that like to sell you more than you need, we were able to sit down and kind of customize uh, all of our needs. Um, it's, a, it's a good unit. And... Um, As you can see, it does a very nice job. This, uh, this particular vehicle also has a tube in the back, which we're going to plant, and we show, we'll show that in a little bit to clean out catch basins because uh, we have no program, and uh, we really need to, to get uh, going on some of these uh, catch basins that are absolutely lodged with debris. <laughs> So one of our plows took a little bit of the turf once in a while, and it has no trouble with cleaning that off. And the idea is to keep this out of our sewer lines, our sewers, the catch basins. You know, when these materials go through the uh, pumps to the station for uh you know the barbers and controls but it's 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 bad on pumps too it would it, it hurts the life of a pump to have debris like this going through it i mean not all that makes it but anyways preservation the epa likes to uh see programs to uh, handle this kind of waste so this just does gutters or does it like go underneath where it does the whole street Oh, we can we can we can move it over. You could do the whole street if you want. That's it's set up for the, um, you know, that's where most of your debris is is in the gutter. Once again, this is kind of a different angle. That shows you that long stretch that they just finished. <clears throat> Mr. Yes. And just out of curiosity, since this is somewhat new to me, um, since that is, in essence, a large vacuum cleaner, that must get full occasionally. And what is our capacity? And um, is that a difference between different models? Is that um, what we're talking there, about? There probably are uh, larger ones. I don't know how many. I'd have to check and see how many cubic feet it holds. But um, you know, there are, there are, you have to handle it a special way, and we're prepared to do that. Um, they consider it, uh, they really kind of call it like a hazardous way, so it takes some special handling, but um, yeah. uh, it's not anything that we can't do. For us as a city, where does that go? Well, we'd have to, we'd have to get a, uh, we'd have to get a dumpster and, and dump into that dumpster and then haul it away. Okay, thank you. But uh, every, every one that has that kind of a uh, sweeping program, that's how they're required to, to do it. Okay, this is a still of um, a catch basin. I think it's on the corner of Shellhart and Fair, Fair Oaks. It is absolutely loaded uh, with debris. <laughs> it was not taking any water. This next picture or this next uh, film will show it. Uh, it's a wand pressure. You bust up the. Uh, it's a process. You have to bust up the uh, the debris that's in there. Those leaves were just packed in there, and then. We didn't show the whole thing, but through the uh, just repeating that operation, that's what we came up with. Yeah. Took, it, took it down to uh, a perfectly clean catch base. I would assume if you have this thing and you have a regular program, then you don't have as – it's not this bad when you're Correct. continuing we to do to it. We need to maintain them. Right. We do. And, right. And um, you know, 
and we would set up a program. I don't know how far we'd get the first mm-hmm. year, but I would think after that we could easily do the city right. in a year, less than a year, right. and, um, and maintain them that way. That's pretty much it, uh, Council, ladies and gentlemen. And any questions? I just have a, a statement. Would it be fair to say, though, that oh, in the yeah. winter time, between them, between the wet leaves and the water that does get stuck in there in the freezing temperatures, that freezes, it yeah. causes expansion, that helps yeah. b- break up some of that catch basin from the inside, or not really? Well, Mayor, it, it, in the cold temperature sensors, it's, it's a water system. You yeah. would not be able to run it. It's, it's going to be temperature sensitive operation. I'm talking, and I'm not talking to street sweeper. I'm talking to catch basins Correct. themselves down in the hole where it's all in there. So, I mean, if we get it cleaned out in the, in the fall prior to it getting cold outside, though. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Because yeah. the debris in that will swell and then expand, causing some breakage of some of that material it, it, or it's, not. It's surely possible. We, you don't want to hold water mm-hmm. anywhere like that at all. I have several questions, if I may. Mr. Towsley. Um, does the manufacturer say how long the broom head lasts, how many hours before it has to be replaced? Um, well, it's, it just, it's the, uh, the brooms on the side. There's, there's not a, well, there is a, there is a broom in the middle, but that, that's only in a really heavy debris. So that's, it just depends on your use, Paul. You know, it's going to depend on how much you get it out there and use it. Do you know how much it is to replace it? I'm, I, I'm can just get, I can get that information for you. Um, okay. It, it, in my dealings in the past, it's really not that expensive. Oh. Not, really, it's not a bad uh, a recovery on that. Okay. And the, the curb streets that you were showing us at the beginning, how approximately how many streets does that apply to in the city? Um, you have uh, all of Knollbrook. We're going to have Cleveland Mass now, a, a lot of curb there. Some of our bridge decks, and then all of... Um, Brentwood Estates and the adjacent, um, uh, I'm, I apologize, I don't North know Acres. all the, uh, um, the, the ones to the east between Clark Mill, those, those, those homes in there are all curb streets. Okay. So we do have Still quite a few uh, curb Okay, and, and then finally, if, if you were to get this and put it into use, how will this affect your manpower? Do you, do you have, a, is it going to pull people off of other necessary areas? Are you going to need another person? Well... <laughs> I'm going to say I always need another person, but um, yeah, it, w- it, it would require uh, a commitment of, of, of personnel to that. Yep, because it's not going to it's not going to help if we can't get that machine out there. I mean, what are you looking at? I mean, and maybe it's too early to tell, but like hours per week, this would have to run. Well, I think initially, I w- as soon as the weather would break, I'd want I'd want to get right on this because I think we we just really need to get. Uh, we really need to get these catch basins and streets clean. So you think like a daily basis or several times a week? Yeah, for, for a while, a daily, um, you know, as many days as we could, depending on the priorities right. of that week or day. Okay. But it'd be, it would be a priority if we got this machine because I'm not going to have a, a, a machine that's, you know, costs this much and not use it. It just wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, and I got one final, I'm sorry. I no, it's fine. Go ahead. Uh, you had mentioned the EPA. Um, and I don't know if you know specifically, but what what does the EPA mandate or suggest or push, whatever the word well, you they, want to use? They want us to uh, they want us to uh, uh, clean up, keep this stuff out of the storm because this this all goes to streams. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. any of the, the debris, oils, all that stuff, it all collects and goes there. Any kind of program that we can use to, to keep the sewers cleaner, they're like leading out to streams and and things. They're they're really happy to hear about it, and they they look on unfavorable. Um, I know that's a, that would go in Josh, our engineer's report. But, but they haven't contacted us to this point. No, they're anything. not requiring us to do it. Okay. It's <clears throat> something that they would be very happy about. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Larry, Following he, up did, on he mentioned uh, the uh, projects with curbs and stuff. There's no reason why this can't be used someplace other than curbs. Oh, no, it, it, you and can take it, yeah. And, and I'm sorry, I, I had Johnson Road out there. It doesn't have a curb. Okay. Maybe I could really quickly just pull that up. My we have, stuff. we have, while you're pulling that up, we have uh, multiple neighborhoods in the, in the city. Uh, even though they don't have curbs, they're contained enough to where this could be used in all of those neighborhoods. Uh, right. I can, and, and this I, is that mess we had on Johnson Road where yeah. it was just everywhere. <clears throat> and um, he, he was uh, just kind of watching out for the mailbox. He could have got right up to the berm and got it all. But that broom will kick it to that plate that you see in the in the picture, 
Mm -hmm. It sets it up for that broom <coughs> to, uh, it's not a broom head, but it's a, a pickup tube. And it takes care of all that. Now, is this a single man or single person yes. operation? Yes. Now, um, maybe if we do the catch basins, possibly, possibly two, but I'd like to try it with one. Um, I think it could be done. Uh, it maybe initially two to, I don't know. I'll have to see. And does this require a CDL? No, it does not. But all our guys have CDLs. But so, you were saying that you would have to probably hire an extra person for this or I, not? I have a guy that was interested in doing it. It's just a man, you know, obviously you put a guy in a sweeper and then you're, you're, you're. Takes away from his own else. else. So it, it would, it would be nice. It would be helpful, but we'll, we could make it work some. And what's the cost to this? The exact number, I don't have it with me. Um, I, I didn't know, I mean, I, I can get that to you easily. Um, but we have it we have it dialed in where we want it as far as all the options and everything. I can get that number. Yeah, if we could get that and uh, the size of the hopper and the cost associated with each dump. Yep. I think um, I think I had provided some of that prior to, and maybe it didn't get to the <clears> council, <throat> but I'll make sure you, you have it. I'll give you uh, some hard copies. It'll be on there, and I can I can I can cut right to those questions if you want to have me back sometime. That'd and be fine. any type of leasing program out there or anything? Yes, we wouldn't have to come up with the. There's, they're, they'll they'll help us in a lot of ways that way. Okay. If the EPA is favoring something like this, is it possible there's some grants out there to help us? Uh, I don't think there's any grants, um, but that's something we always look for. I really don't think so. And what would be the lead time for it? Um, somewhere in the vicinity of uh, four, four to six months. It just depends. They they could have a, a unit. They could have a unit that's that's kind of right there. We cut the lead time. Three to four months though is pretty pretty good. Mr. Markey. Uh, Mr. Hess, I, I think when we spoke about this previously, we talked about there's some city maintained culverts as well that this could be used. It can't blow the material up, but it could suck out those culverts to help with some stormwater Correct. drainage, drainage things like that. Yep. Just another use for the product that we had talked about previously. And I believe, if I remember right, the fellow that was demonstrating this said there are extensions on that hose <coughs> for such as culverts and things that could be done. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I asked most him. About of, most that. of the catch basins that we have are fairly shallow comparatively. But so I'm talking need, about. I'm sorry, I didn't mean. Oh, it's okay. I'm talking about culverts themselves, under under driveway culverts. I mentioned to him that when when we were talking to him that day in the garage, mm -hmm. and I asked him if there are extensions for that hose, and I'm I'm almost the, certain he said that there was. Oh, the not blast, for the, the not blast for the, through a possible. Uh, no, not for the wand, but for the actual suction hose, if there's extensions. And I believe that he said that there were extensions. That hey, can probably be. Could, there's probably something that, that might be able to get in there and, and do some of that. Right. It's possible, yeah. I have one more. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Hess, this was before you came, so I apologize if you're not familiar, but uh, several years back before City Council, um, an idea was floated. I think it was called a Vector, maybe? Yeah, it's, just, that, it's that, a brand name, kind of the same thing. I thought that was more for s sanitary sewers. I'm just wondering if you, is that the same thing or is there a difference be between the two? If we, I mean, if we, if we had to maintain our own sanitaries, you could use it for that. Okay, but for the most part, they're both the same type of machine? Yeah, the, it's, it's called, I think, I believe the unit, because this, the gentleman that was a salesman for this current unit was also the salesman for the, the last unit was a vac call, because he was telling me about the, the, the uh, how it was presented to council in, in the past. So okay. it was a vac all. It basically does the same thing. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? If we do move forward with looking more into this, will we be looking at comparative costs to other brand names? Yeah, I have, uh, I have three quotes already. Okay. So I would be presenting that all to council. Okay. Yeah, tentatively, you know, next year, and um, you know, we, we wouldn't need we wouldn't need the machine until the weather broke, probably March. 
that's when we could probably get it out there depending on the weather okay. and we would yeah. so this is not something that you are wanting to purchase this year no this, will, this would be a next year anything else thank you mr hess you're welcome thank you <clears throat> Moving on with public comments, Tanya Vanderveen. Okay. To D? All right, I'll mark it right there so I don't forget. If I forget, raise your hand. All right. I know. <laughs> All right. Committee of the Whole, amend Section 258.15, Deferred Compensation Plans. Mr. McGlone. Thank you, Mr. President. This is an ordinance that will allow the city to offer two additional 457 deferred comp plans, including the state of Ohio plan for the employees. So I'm assuming they have a couple already right now and there's gonna be two more. Yeah, currently the Ohio deferred comp, which is run by the state, is the program that's offered to the employees. This would just allow us to designate a couple other alternative options. Uh, just It's all employee choice, no one's required to do it, but just give them different investment vehicles, should they, should they so choose. <laughs> okay. Is this something that we probably want to do right away because that way they can get these plans into effect? Or I mean, I think three readings, and I don't think there's emergency language. There's no there. rush for that? Yeah, there's no rush. Okay. Okay. Yeah, three readings is fine. Three readings is fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyone on council have anything to say about this? <clears throat> the only thing, um, I spoke to Mr. Markey earlier today, and, and this is for their retirement. That's correct. It allows them to, on a tax advantage basis, put some additional funds away for retirement if they so choose. Thank you. Yep. And I'm not sure city don't have no matching on city deferred comp or anything, do they? No. no. I didn't the city think does not match on didn't think the so. deferred okay. comp plan. Okay. We, the city pays its, its portion of the PERS contribution, right, right. Right. but not the deferred comp. Okay. Anyone else have anything else to say tonight? Okay, with, with that, I'd like to put... Um, Ordinance 58-2019 on for the next um, council meeting, and um, we'll go the full three readings. I'll second. There's a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Do we, excuse me, I'm sorry. Do we need emergency language with that, though, so it goes into effect no, after I, it's I passed? We have some time. Okay. This is just more of a down-the-road kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Call the roll. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Letter B, amend section 276.06, veterans credit on civil service exam. Mr. McGlone. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we're looking to um, uh, make an ordinance to provide the veteran credit up to 20% for those qualified individuals passing uh, civil service entrance exam. Mr. Markey, how is it right now? Right now, there's uh, two points awarded. Uh, Ms. Whipke asked me the question earlier, how is two points compared to 20%? And I don't have the answer for that. We'll get you that answer. Again, this is not a rush, uh, so we'll make sure for the next next reading we have that information. So right now, the revised code provides for that 20% credit. I think Norton's ordinance in the past matched the revised code, but as, uh, it, as we're trying to encourage uh, better employment in this country, uh, the state has revised its rules, so we think it's f time to follow suit and match what the state's doing in terms of that 20% credit. And it'd be for original appointments only, so it'd be for a new employment into the city, yeah. basically entry-level positions, but okay. it gives them uh, veterans who meet the qualifications an advantage on those applications. Okay. New hires. Anybody new that's hires. here already, does, it, it, won't, it won't count. It doesn't okay. count towards promotional or anything like that, yeah. Anyone else have... Anything else for this? So just for uh, clarity, this will put us in parity with the revised code. That's right. That's the, right. The old one said it would be precedent <laughs> o over the revised code. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested as well, the difference between the two points. And yeah, the I'll, I'll find out the answer. I, I don't know the answer offhand, but I'll, we'll get that. And we'll go to three readings on this, too. We'll go three readings. Okay. As well. And is there any conflict there with civil service themselves saying no? That Civil service, they have the ability, they believe, to adopt rules, but I think the council and the revised code can override anything civil service believes is their appropriate role for that. Okay. So council sets the terms of employment for the city. Okay. okay. With that, then I'm going to put... Uh, Ordinance 59-2019 on for the next uh, council meeting. Uh, um, 
Council I'll meeting for its first reading. I'll second. Anything further? Clerk, call the roll. Mr. McLone? Yes. Ms. Whipkey? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. All right, letter C. Rezoning of PID 4600259 and 4604166 to uh, MUD. Mr. Gaynor. Yes, this is referring to the um, Brookside development there and other uh, developments throughout the city where we might have 10 acres or more, I believe they discussed, uh, multiple classifications, uh, business, housing, whatever, um, and changing that to, uh, to uh, uh, accommodate any development that might arise in some areas. Anybody have? Anything they'd like to add? Yeah, as I understand that, this is to actually rezone the golf course. This is, this is We've actually already set the mat. This is the, city I mean the mud. This is the city initiating a rezoning of the golf course to the MUD uh, standards that were recently adopted by this council. Yeah. Those are actually not in effect until next council meeting. So this ordinance piggybacks on the effective date of that cause, because the zoning ordinance couldn't have an emergency clause on that provision. Right. So that goes into effect next Monday. So we're going to introduce the new legislation uh, for that uh, at that time. This is similar to the other processes we followed for rezoning a property. Uh, this goes down the planning commission for their recommendation. They have 60 days to respond. Because of that, we're hoping you can move it through a little quicker just because it's going to come back to council. We're going to have the public hearing. We're going to follow the same process we followed on other rezonings. But uh, the initial initial step is to send it down the planning commission for their review. So just to be clear for everyone, this does not actually rezone. It sends it to planning commission for right. their input, and then it comes back to us yeah. again. This, is sem this essentially acts as an application to th that, right. the application process. Okay. It's In other words, to make, to make sure they don't sit on it forever. Well, no, I, I think the codif we, we've talked about this before. So the codified ordinances say for a rezoning, it can be done by the property owner, mm -hmm. by the city, or, or property owner by council, essentially, are the two major ways it's done. So the city can do it. In order for the city to initiate an application, it should be done by council as part of the uh, application. Okay. All right, and this would actually um, give three different types of uses, which would be residential for R1, R2, and R3. B1 and B2 commercial, and uh, the CREC as well. So there could be three separate types of zoning, more or less. Yeah, so it's, it's really the concept is a mixed-use concept with mm -hmm. a blend of commercial business, you know, businesses and residential. Yes. So are we saying that this is going not to the agenda for next week but to planning first? Well, it has to go to agenda first, okay. but what we're asking you is to move, if you would be willing to move the ordinance along so we can get the planning commission. <laughs> It's really just the application. It's the first step of the process. So, so y you need us to place it on the agenda as an ordinance, pass it, send it to planning commission, let them make their they take their process. They they do their process, send it back to us, and then we go through our That's process. Correct. Then as you far introduce as an ordinance, schedule a public hearing, take right. the three reads. You know all the all the normal stuff we do once once it gets back to council for the reason. Right. Right. Uh, I, I, I have a question on that yeah. process. Even though we're telling them they have to, they got 60 days to do it, if they got it done and if they sent it back to us in 30, we don't have to wait to 60. No, you don't have to wait. So plan commission is given the right to wait up to 60 days to take an action. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a time limit on plan commission. If they don't act, then it comes back to, uh, it's treated as approved. Right. And then it comes back to council. So they can, they can approve it. They can deny it. They could go in one meeting, two meetings, 60 days, not act. I mean, was, they could do anything. Um, either way, it's coming back to you. And their actions and recommendation for this council. Okay. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. Thank you. And you're asking us to waive second and third, or we're asking you if you'd be willing to waive second and third, yeah. just to move the process along yeah, administratively. I, I do. Uh, right. So I'd like to move. Hold, that. hold, hold on, Mr. Casey. Yeah. Joe Casey, 3141 Monterey Drive. Why is the city changing the zoning and not the property owners? Because the city feels that it's a proper zoning classification for the property. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Did you say we're the city's the agent? The city is initiating the application. Okay. Yeah, I said the city feels it's the proper zoning classification okay. for the property. Anything further? Okay. Mr. Gaynor. Yes, I move to 
move it to the agenda for next Monday. Second. All right. There's a motion and a second to uh, place it on the agenda for next meeting. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Mr. McClone? Yes. Letter E, wage rates for seasonal employees and interns. Mr. McGlone? Whoop. Yeah, Sorry. Letter D. <laughs> Letter D. I put a check mark next to it so I wouldn't forget, and then I forgot. <laughs> Who's just seeing if you were paying attention? <laughs> Zoning classification C1, Mr. Gaynor. Yes, this is pretty uh, detailed. It's a rezoning of the entire Cleveland Maslin corridor and Norton Avenue, Greenwich Road corridor from, from uh, city limits essentially in both directions. It's for the new zoning for uh, just about every business that might possibly be coming into that area. And um, there's, uh, <coughs> it's, been, it's been discussed now for what, s several months and uh, I think we'd like to, uh, it's been to planning, they've made their recommendations, and I think we have those recommendations uh, of changes that they suggested in red in this. Um, I only have uh, one question, really major question, or not major, but um, where uh, planning desired to remove city council from quite a few spots. Uh, I, I just wondered why. What was the question again? And well, such as, uh, let me get this paper here. Um, just a second. Give you an example and then you'll know what I'm talking about. On page, uh, I don't have a page number on this one. Um, where it says uh, Page all 21. C1 developments should maximize the use of natural building materials on the exterior, such as brick, stone, blah, blah, blah. Page, page 21 of 90 at the bottom. Or city council used to say, um, and they have scratched out city council yeah. in several spots. Do you know yeah, why? so I think, I think uh, Ms. Whipke was asking me this question as well, and I think the, the con not the concern, the issue there is that. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. No, the issue, the issue with the and city, and or city council is city council doesn't approve site plans. So I think that it was initially constructed so that it would come back to, if council approved them, you would have the ability to review the standard as well. But that's really a decision that's made at the planning commission level only. So, so it doesn't actually come up to you. So that's why the and city and or city council is scratched out. So if the city council, I mean, if the planning commission uh, received plans for a building or development or something, and they said a certain thing about the materials in this particular instance, there's several instances yeah. throughout this, but in this particular one, if if they said. Um, uh, they were they were not okay with a certain part of the plan. Are 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 we saying that since this is removed, the city council could not override that and say we're okay with it and we want it to go ahead? Yeah, I'm saying that decision doesn't actually come up to city council normally, right? So I think the and or city council. I'm not sure where that came from. I'm not sure if we started from a different uh, city who has a different structure uh, of how they do it, but. Uh, city council doesn't actually look at those issues. It's really a planning commission issue. So all of these issues that I'm... I don't know about all of them. I'll find out for you because I was not as involved as Mr. Fowler was in, uh, in drafting these, so I can, I can find out. Uh, I mean, some of them, yeah. maybe all of them. I, I haven't compared them, but um, I just, I, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, uh, I, I don't think that... The planning commission said ha should have the final say on on any uh, building project, uh, and if 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 you have if you have the uh, planning commission saying just for an example, uh, we don't want this particular thing on this building, mm -hmm. and and the builder was building a two or three million dollar building, and he said, well, if we don't have this thing on our building, uh, we're not going to build it in your city. 
I'd like, I mean, I, I would think that city council would have the authority to override the planning commission's decision and go ahead with it if, if it was in the interest of the city. So is it, it's my, is it my understanding, am I correct, that when, and the only place I see it is under architectural and building material standards and then also height. building heights. Yeah. And my understanding is, is that as a general course, the site plans and those types of issues never come to city council. That's, that's right. So this is the code and it's taken care of all at planning commission. It, it never comes to us. That's right. So the or city council thing is redundant because we would never know about it anyway. I think that's why it was a limit. I think that's why it was scratched out. I, I believe that's why. Is it was that okay? Out. I'm not sure where the language came from in the first place, okay. but I believe I, I'll find out again. I, yeah, if we if we could figure that out, because I mean, if, I, you know, I I assume that's why, but I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'm sure Mr. Fowler will be happy to answer that question since he was primarily okay. the author on that. So, I, I or responsible for striking it, Mr. Towsley. I'm not for or against what I'm going to ask. I'm just curious. Um, the the limitations of it, it went from uh, the Barberton Corporation limit back to Long Drive. And I'm just curious what was the reasoning of that. I know Mr. Dowling's here. Maybe he could. Two separate parts. Well, if, if I could. The, the, the one, the C1, has one limit and the town the town center overlay has another, Paul. Um, one of them. Uh, one of them should be the whole, almost the whole corridor. Yeah, exactly. And the one, one of them, C1 corridor, runs. Yeah, and then the overlay is just a, a, a specific center section. Center mark, yes. Uh, the, the C1 district is, is from the complete district from uh, Columbia Woods Drive here to the Long Drive. No. Well, or to the city limits, either one uh, in that direction. And in the other direction, uh, the town center uh, only runs to, I thought town center run to Long Drive. Mm -hmm. And and the C1 actually runs to the city limits. If okay, so in short, this is just defining the, the town center, not the C1 district, what I'm reading. Well, no, it's defining of all of it. They're both in there. If you read uh, Paul... Uh, uh, let me find it here. The part I'm referring to. Though. You're you're talking about letter C. Correct. Yeah, that's the, that <laughs> okay. defines okay. just the town center. Okay, thank you. Yes. And, and if I might, when you get into the overlay, it's a much more specific as to what can happen because it's right. closer, the heart of the city. Let's put it that way. Okay. So we wanted a lot more control on that area, as but we felt that we needed to go to the town limits in most cases outside of coming past Columbia Woods Drive. Thank you. Any, anything further? Yes, I, I had mm -hmm. a question. Thank you. Um, I, I'm kind of confused on this because we've had applications come in front of us for the zoning and stuff that had preliminary and final site plan on it. And then we went from one to the other. And yet they're still talking a preliminary and a final site plan in this so have we actually established the difference between that or are we going to do it as I'm still seeing two steps what section are you looking at oh I don't know I wrote that down out of it <laughs> that, that, that that's in my cheat sheet <laughs> so 1279.07 talks about a preliminary site plan and then we'll go on and we'll talk about a final site plan, but yet some of the things coming ahead of us right now have had preliminary slash final. Yeah, you're talking about the process we followed in the past? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We maybe have, um, we have refined our processes to better align them with the codified ordinances moving forward. How's that for an answer? Okay. And um, and also we're also going to include this other step of an architectural ar architectural review board, board. Yep. review board, as well as the planning and council. That's right. And then at twelve seventy nine point one seven uh, depicts the town center overlay district uh, is defined as Cleveland Masson Road from Panther Way south to Trotter and east to west. 
from Columbia Woods Drive to Long Drive. So that's de defined in here. Okay. So expanded types of business outside of that area mm -hmm. with slightly expanded yeah. and not as stringent as far as the building code and how it's supposed to look. Correct. Does that help, Paul? You'll also have it's still been moved from Barberton city limits to Long Drive. No, C1 is the, the commercial district is going to the Barberton limits north, south, and east. Okay. The C, the overlay that's closer into town, that has been cut back some to Panther Way and to Trotter and then to Long and Columbia Woods. So in other words, the I overlay it on the first explanation, yeah. but then I'm reading this and it's saying the same thing. Yeah, so the, the overlay is all part of C1, but okay. not all of C1 is in the overlay. Okay, correct. Um, Mr. Gaynor and I went to most of these meetings, and trust me, it was very confusing. It still <coughs> is, but I have a much better handle on it than I did starting out. Yes, I do too, and I have it in front of me, but I have so many pages here. Um, Another question I think, Justin, you could probably answer. Uh, the Architectural Review Board um, will consist, I know, of the mayor and city administrator and an architect, correct? Right. Um, as we do with zoning, I know we pay um, certain mem members, you know, for their meetings sure. and such. Are we planning, is this a part of the plan to pay those architectural design um, review board members or at least the architect on the architectural review board members since the other two are already employed? Yeah, so I, I Mr. Fowler, probably, or maybe the mayor knows, but my understanding is that the city engineer, the engineering firm that currently serves in the role of the city engineer, also provides architectural services. Okay. So the intent would be you have one person who at least has some architectural knowledge, like an architect, uh, reviewing these reviewing these design standards to make sure they comply. So I believe they would be paid probably their standard rate. Okay. But so I, he, I can get you an answer on okay, that. Okay. That's that answer was on my that. question. He so he. He is not only an engineer, he is an architect. Well, the firm, the firm would does it. That's what I'm the saying. They'll have firm. someone yeah. represent them at the meeting as an architect. Right. Yeah, and two, if, if you refer back to 1255.01, uh, establishing establishment in terms, it talks about um, consisting of three members, including the city engineer or his designee, a city zoning official, and one member appointed by me. Yeah, I, okay. I and, did see that. I one just, member should be trained in the field of architecture. I, that's what I was getting okay. at. It's okay. trained in the field of architecture. Correct. And I, and I figured that if we used the city engineer's firm, we would be paying them to participate in these meetings. They're well, if they're willing to donate their time, we'll accept it. Of course. <laughs> okay. That's all I really have on it. I, I'd like to... Uh, Hold, hold on, I think that there were some people who wanted to speak. Good. Ms. Vanderveen? <clears throat> Tanya Vanderveen, 3004 Union Street. How's everybody this evening? Good. Good. So, based on this, what it states, um, an amendment to the zoning code of the city by adding chapter. My phone is going to ring. By adding chapter 1279, section 1289.08, and 1289.09, chapter 1255. So bear with me because I'm trying to wrap my head around and make sure I understand a process, which is why I picked this particular um, piece to ask questions. It says that it's an amendment to the zoning code. I realize that it's an amendment to the zoning code for C1, zoning classification, which is not applicable to the issues that I've been constantly speaking about. But I've been consistently told that there can be no amendments to the zoning code. I've asked that question many times. And so no. I'm trying to understand why. No, we can, all, we can amend the zoning code. We just have to have it go for three readings, have a public hearing, and it can't be an emergency, correct? That's, that's correct. Say that for me one more time. Council has the authority to amend the zoning code, but it has to go for a full three readings. There has to be a public hearing, and it cannot contain emergency language. So 
it's a whole nother process. Right. I, I think one of the things we talked, and I don't want to take away from your time, so if you want to continue, go Wait, ahead. that's okay. I'll stop the... I think, I think one of the things we, we talked about with your process was you'd ask for how do we change I-1, right? Because we said if it's an I-1 zoning classification, then the rules for I-1 have to apply. And I think when we talked about your situation, we said we'd have to change the zoning code in order to accommodate some of the changes that you wanted. And, and you said that was not possible. I... I uh, I think it's possible. I didn't say it's that. clearly possible because you're amending yeah. the zoning code for another classification, so it can be done. Yeah, I, I, I don't believe I said it wasn't possible, but that's, not impossible. Yeah. You just said that no, that would not that would not be done. That that's not feasible. That I would have to go through another process. So 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 it would be another process. It would be another process. That's true. It would be another process. So uh, and and I, I I turned off my timer, so you're good. Okay. So I. Th <laughs> So I think what we said was is that um, if we amended, say we amended I-1 zoning, that would apply all over the city. Correct. However, if we wanted to make some changes to certain things in the situation over there, we wouldn't do that in the zoning code. We would do that in the whole process where we approve the plats and the, and the plans and things of that nature. It's not that we said we couldn't do it. Okay. Let me stop you for just a second. I just heard one of you say that city council does not approve site plans. Is that true or not true? Okay, so when I say we, yes. I mean the city. I don't mean we. When I say we, I mean the city. Who approves the site plans? Because I'm confused, which is why minor, I got up if to it's ask a, these if questions. It's a, if it's a minor subdivision, which is a term of art, it's planning commission. If it's a major subdivision, which is also a term of art, then it, it goes to the planning commission and then the council for approval. So it really depends on the situation. Um, what your situation is, I, I don't know offhand. I'd have to look at it, whether it's a minor or a major subdivision. I don't know the answer to that offhand. How it's classified. What's that? How it's classified. How it's classified, right. I don't want to misspeak about it. It's in the zoning code. It's the definition. Next question. These items that you're talking about with regards to to D, the zoning classification, the numbers that I listed, 1279, 1289.08. Prior to coming to, to the meeting this evening, I got on your website, clicked on government, clicked on the ordinances, which takes me to a website that lists everything. Mm -hmm. Your charter, mm -hmm. your ordinances, basically anything you could ever needed or wanted to know about the city of Norton. These are not in there. So this is a new, this is new legislation, basically. That we're creating city, this. That you're creating Correct. to accommodate the amendment for rezoning of C1. Correct. This is this I, did these I say that these are these are new zoning regulations. We are creating a C1 classification and we are creating the town center overlay. So they would not exist in the current code because we haven't never passed them. them. We've, We've never, never had, had them. them. We've never had them. Correct. So you said, you explained very eloquently a couple of minutes ago that in changing the I-1, just off the top of my head, that that would have to be applicable to all I-1 districts, correct? So if I guess I'm wondering why, or I guess I'm wondering what the process that maybe I as a resident can start to present to you where that where I could suggest changes that might be applicable in I-1 for people whose property would be affected anywhere in the city. When it's not applicable, then it wouldn't apply. But in any I-1 area where people who live right next to it be affected, what would be the process that I take as a resident to bring to you to make those changes so that any resident in the city of Norton that is afflicted with this potential issue would have some protection moving <clears throat> forward. I'd say about the way you've been doing it. I, I, I would say there's a number of things you can do. You can uh, you could probably approach planning commission. You can you can approach council as you've been doing so. I don't I don't know if there's if you can do it by petition or not. Yeah, I think you can initiate an ordinance. I mean that's that's a. How do I do that? Well, it's, there's a process in the codified ordinances. Okay. There's a form that the Secretary of State provides for the uh, initiation of, a, of an ordinance. There's a number of technical requirements for who can circulate, how they get circulated, how they forms get filled out. You can get those from the Board of Elections. You can get those from the, uh, 
from the Secretary of State's website itself. But it's very self-explanatory on the yeah. I didn't say that. <laughs> I mean, there's been a number of people. So I will tell you. Like I will tell you historically. Right. So I'll tell you historically. There's been a number of people who have incorrectly done the process. So it's not the most straightforward process. The verbiage is very, very important. Very important. Okay. And how you do it, following the process is very, very important. Well, I'm not stupid, so I'm sure that I, I can figure it out. So, yep, non but it that. is in the ordinances on how to initiate that process. That's true. Yes, correct. That's correct. Under what section? Um, well, I go on that website a lot, which I'm on it right now, so I'll, I'll find it for you. Are we waiting for me to answer? No, no. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Can he get it to you afterwards? Absolutely. Okay. Can, Absolutely. Can I maybe? Mr. Towsley, go ahead. I just want to clarify to make sure you understand. My understanding, anyhow, <laughs> was when you asked us when you were up there, you asked us if we could change the legislation in front of us applying it to the industrial. Yes. And that's where we meant we, we can't change the whole code just through this piece of legislation. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? It, it wasn't that. I'm trying to. I'm new to all of this, so I'm trying to wrap my head around what's applicable to one is not necessarily applicable to another and that I'm learn I'm learning what those processes are right. so well, like, I understand but you might imagine that when I read your sure. um, agenda when it was posted the little hairs on the back of my neck <laughs> you know stood up because I my initial thought was well, how can that be because I've asked this question of the Planning Commission many times I've asked it of all of you I've walked away from those conversations with the understanding that that can't be done, and yet it has been. So that's why I came tonight to ask those questions. And I just want to put on the record that I provided a letter to all of you um, that I gave to Mr. Towsley prior to the meeting started. So I'm sure he will circulate. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, th this C1 we've been working on since September, August, something like that. So it, it's a long process. All right. Um, so, any further discussion regarding the C1 classification? Oh, Mr. Dowling, I knew I knew that there was someone else who would raise their hand. Ralph Dowling, uh, 556 Hartzell Drive in Norton, um, uh, Chair of Planning Commission, and uh, I don't know if you have the red and blue marked copies, or you just have the red, red. version. Is it just red? Just red. Red. Okay. Because we rewrote some of that, and the stuff that the Planning Commission had was in blue, so that may not have been passed along. But to answer uh, Ms. Uh, Whipke's question, uh, there's a, a site plan form that you have to fill out when a contractor comes in. And uh, one comment I had to that, um, I, I didn't actually write it in the text of this C1. I actually had like about a page and a half of questions. And one of them is we should be putting uh, final or preliminary on there because, uh, let's say, in the case of uh, the development on Clark Mill Road, that's actually a preliminary. Now, I've talked to, you know, the developer there, and he thinks it's a final. I said, no, it's not a final. I actually went back and looked because he did not at the time have agreements on um, Barbara and uh, Sewer. And so that has to go on to his final plan. So he needs to resubmit that with all the additional information on you know, sewer lines and where they're going to run and things like that, and then that would come back to you for approval. But I did ask that we put preliminary or final on there so that when we get into a planning commission meeting and we're making a motion to approve this that, you know, we don't have somebody saying, oh, no, I meant that to be a final. Right. Uh, and that's kind of why mm -hmm. we put preliminary slash final the last time. But it would be a lot better if we would actually add that to our form. And I don't think those forms are in the... Uh, the codified ordinances. I think they're just something that uh, I don't think you can print those out out of the system. I think they're uh, maintained by the office. So, but uh, that's why there is a preliminary and a final. Uh, several ones we've had, we've approved as final because all the information was on there. Okay. So. And I and I actually think that the copy we have has planning commission's changes in there. They're just black because it was probably copied again or something. So I see some strikeouts and some underlines in black, which I assume are the things that came from Planning Commission. There was a good bit there, a couple of areas. There was like a whole page or so because it was a duplicate between uh, C1 and overlay C1. The words were exactly the same. We didn't see a reason to do that. So, but thank you. Okay, thank you. 
Any further comments or discussion? Yes, I just uh, Mr. Gaynor. I want to make sure that I understand what's happening here. Mm -hmm. uh, this this one that we have in front of us now mm -hmm. from the Planning Commission. Right. Are 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 we are we sending this now to the agenda for a first reading? Is this what's going to happen with this now? In C1. I mean, for, you mean for I the C1? The yes. That we wanted to do. Yes, that's right. what, that is what's happening. All right, so we, I should make a motion to yes. send it to the next week's agenda. For right. the first reading. For the first reading, right? Yep. As it is. As it stands, yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. That's my motion. All right. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Gaynor? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Mr. McLone? Yes. All right, on to letter E, wage rates for seasonal employees and interns. Mr. McLone? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, every year we always get certain seasonal employees for the service department, and um, every once in a while, time to time, we administration will employ a college intern to provide services for the city to enhance their uh, educational opportunities. and. Tonight we just want to set some hourly wages, wages uh, for these uh, employees, seasonal employees, nine dollars an hour to fifteen dollars an hour, and college interns ten dollars an hour to fourteen fifty an hour. Any questions or discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Ms. Whipke. Um, these people, just to, for clarity's sake, they're not in the bargaining unit. And we really don't have anything written currently uh, establishing their wages. Correct. Correct. Thank you. And basically, the, as far as the range, we're looking for a range because depending on whether it's a, a first-time kid that, or mm -hmm. somebody that's worked with us for several seasons and has come back, it's just some of it's getting a little harder and harder to find uh, high school or college kids that will come out and uh, do the uh, do seasonal work for us, whether it's mowing and trimming and so forth. So um, a lot of the communities in the area are are set at certain rates, so we're trying to be a little more competitive. Not as not more competitive than them, but just competitive in the market, so to speak. So we want to set a range to the point where it will give us the opportunity then to, uh, to look at, at hiring some seasonal uh, employees. In today's labor market, we need to be competitive because yeah, there's just no one I mean, there. Yeah, I got it. I mean, that, that, that's just it. We're trying to get, I mean, in the fight, and in, 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 talking to Larry, the idea is we want to get people in that have a little bit of experience to the point where we're not putting, uh, you know, diesel in, in gas tanks and gas in diesel tanks and, and ruining equipment mm -hmm. and so forth. Well, it's funny, but it's not no, because right. it's, it's right. happened. And then right. it's like we're we're spending money on mowers and uh, equipment oh, yeah. and then turning around and you know looking at uh trying to keep the equipment that we have without getting them ruined uh right so and the only thing other thing i would note is that uh the auditors have requested this yes. in the audit this year they asked what's the basis for the hourly rates we've been paying historically we've been paying them since you know <laughs> beginning of time but now they've asked and so uh, council sets the, as I mentioned earlier, you set the terms of employment for the employees of the city. So this is another ordinance we're asking for. What have we historically paid? Uh, I don't know the answer. To that. No. Uh, I don't like eight or nine bucks an hour. Okay. I mean, it's, yeah. All right. Well, minimum wage. I mean, uh, four twenty-five fifty cents above minimum. I think is where we were, but with McDonald's at yeah. up to fourteen. Right. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's just we're trying to get help that right. that we can utilize. <laughs> Is there a reason that the seasonal help ranges from nine to fifteen, and college interns ten to fourteen fifty? College kids are cheap. <laughs> I guess. Okay. That's a good question about that. I, that was on my mind when you mentioned high school students. Is there a minimum age for hire for employment? Uh, I think that'd be sixteen. I think. Yeah, I, that, I would assume sixteen, 16 but I don't. Yeah, I don't know the yeah, answer. especially to, to use equipment. I think he's got sixteen that. driver's license. I Thank so. you. Anyone else up here? With that, I'd like to get a first reading for this uh, ordinance uh, sixty-two two thousand nineteen <coughs> for the next council meeting. A second. Now, we, with the seasonal coming up here pretty quick, is this something we gotta? 
So I think I think we're I think the auditors would like it to have it wrapped up. Because um, we'll be hiring some seasonal employees. There's that soon. too, and I think by the time the audit's wrapped up, we'd like to be able to tell them, you know, hey, we're so we're maybe do a this. first reading and then come back and if you're willing, something yeah, like that. Yeah, okay, we'll it's just not, do a first reading yeah. for this week, and then we'll decide after that. And what's the expected uh, end date on the audit? Uh, I have to find out from Mr. Messner. I think they just recently started, so I don't think it's right. Yeah. I think we have a little bit of time. Anything else? Call the roll. Mr. McClone? Yes. Ms. Whipkey? Yes. Mr. Carrot? Yes. Letter F, contract with EDG to design walking paths in Columbia Woods Park. Ms. Whipkey. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this is not to exceed 27,500, and this is for strictly designing the walking paths in the park down here. This is what we've applied for of the grant, correct? That's right. This is CDBG grant funds that are paying right. the cost of the walking path design. So it's a grant-funded project. But is the design paid by us, or is that also CDBG? That is the CDBG, is the design. Okay. Understanding. Well, then what, when it comes down to actually building it, that's what I thought the grant was for? Well, or is that a separate design one? is part of build. I mean, you have to design to build. So, okay, I mean, so gonna, as we, as we approach building, we'll probably reapply for more CDBG funds. Okay. After the design's done and we have some other. It, uh, uh, do we, do we need to put a rush on this or can it go to three readings since it is getting nicer out I and guess, due to the grants coming through? I've not heard that we need to rush it. Have you heard mayor? Yeah. So I think we're okay. We're okay. Proceed three readings. And does this walk only, or is this also like a bike path, or what? Do I think I think initially, from what we talked about, um, it's really focusing initially on like accessibility to like the, the covered pavilions over there, and to get the baseball fields and some okay. of the easier things. Eventually, there'll be linkages. To, it's wide enough you can ride a bike, I suppose, and walk at the same time. But that's the idea: is to provide access to the uh, the amenities that are already existing over there. Anyone else? Okay. This time I motion to add Ordinance 63 2019 to the May 13th Council agenda for first reading. I'll second. Thank you. Anything further? Yeah, I just wanted to note, Mayor just noted for me the, the funding award was for 40000 from CDBG, okay. so we'll have some funds left over to begin construction when that, when that time comes. Okay. So. Call the roll. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Letter G, contract with EDG for design of stormwater and road improvements for Barber Road for the 2019 OPWC application. Ms. Whipke. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, well, before we get into it, is this something that, can this go to three readings or do we need to expediate this? I'm looking. Yeah, I'm not sure when the, when the application is due. That's just a thing. So the only thing is it's... Uh, and I know with the design, when you, when, for the application, when we have it, the design, you get the discretionary points because mm -hmm. the design being complete. But um, I would say set it for a first read, and yeah, yeah we can yeah. always and we'll worry suspend. about yeah. what we need to do with that. Yeah, yeah this is for designing the the stormwater, and uh, it's actually going to be not to exceed fifty five thousand dollars to begin with, and. Uh, we're looking at redoing the, some of the road, about 4,800 feet worth, and at the same time trying to make, going to replace a, a guardrail on Wadsworth Road that's been damaged, and to try and keep this, to eliminate some of the flooding, although there's not going to be any guarantee because a lot of the stuff that needs to be done out there hasn't moved forward as yet when we were looking at it for like um, the, I forgot the name of that project, the watershed stuff and other improvements that was being looked at through this water study back uh, 2016. But we're doing our best at trying to get that taken care of during this as well. Anyone else? If I may, just in the attached memo, uh, it's in here that the Ohio Public Works uh, grant is due in July. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, thank just you. Just so you know. Okay. So we need to get this done. 
do we just want to go ahead and waive the first readings now since we need to get yep. it out there? Okay, I motion to add, uh, oh, don't I have to take it back? No, you're good. Okay. Just... I motion to add Ordinance 64 2019 to the May 13th Council agenda for uh, first reading and looking to waive the second and third readings as well. I'll second. Anything further? Call the roll, please. Ms. Wibke? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Letter H, GPD contract amendment. Ms. Wibke. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, now, this is for they're actually doing the con observing the construction of the roads and the repairs so far. Since we've already started working on the roads, is this a uh, something we need to get passed again waive the readings yes. this one for sure and just so you know the, he has they've been out from day one right okay our guy the inspect they've been inspecting from day one for us okay and this is an amount not to exceed 29,700 for the 2019 road construction and as you're already aware we're going to be looking to waive the second and third reading since we're already using it anyone else yes I've got a question Mr. Towsley. Uh, the under project understanding, it talks about the 2019 road program and gives the dates April 22nd to June 30th. The only question I have, uh, I am, I'm assuming this does not include when Johnson Road gets repaired, and it, I just want to make sure that's the case, and I assume we're going to deal with that later. That's not part of this this okay. project the bidded project so yes this is my understanding that just we'll the road program yeah. the actual designated road program Johnson Road is separate from that we're still Correct. but we're still going to be looking at having somebody out there that knows what yes, they're doing to make sure they're doing forward. it right we've learned our lesson mm -hmm. and we want to have someone inspecting an engineering firm inspecting on our behalf to make okay. sure we're getting what we paid for and what is the total on this one 29.7 all right, I thought you said 27 something. That was a typo in the uh, Board of Control. No, I mean, just now I thought oh, you said 27. I think that it was 27, the other one was. This okay. one's 29.7. Right. I make a motion to add this to the agenda for March 65 2019 to the March 13th Council agenda for first reading, looking to waive the second and third readings. I'll second. I think you mean May 13th, not March. Oh. Yeah, I didn't like March that well. Thank you. <laughs> All right. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I keep seeing the number 29890. Yeah, that's what I have. That's the number I keep seeing just for. There were two different numbers, one on Board of Control. And okay. One in the, the one we have attached here is 29890. Okay. He's Well, the proposal. And that's. Matches what? the ordinance, but the Board of Control is different. Okay. No, he, he's looking at the what came from the company. Yeah, the proposal. Yeah, we had. Seen but it that. also says it in. I the, was going to say the <laughs> ordinance says twenty nine eight ninety. It says in here in in here, and we've got twenty nine seven. So we need to change that. The actual amount is going to be twenty nine thousand eight hundred and ninety. Okay. Well, what did the board of control approve? Twenty nine seven, I think, or maybe it was. It, Here. There was like a hundred and ninety dollars difference. So witness need to match that, or else board of controls would well, have to. We we can we can put this on the agenda for reading, and we can look at what happened at <laughs> sure, board, we'll of board of control. In the meantime. And if we have to, then we go back through board of control and change right, it through fine. board of control. For for, for change. That's but the twenty nine eight ninety is the number. That's right. All right. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. And credit card policy, Ms. Whipke. Thank you. Um, last year, I guess the state had approved House Bill 312 since uh, November 30th of 2018, mm -hmm. and they're actually looking to. Um, make sure we take better everybody has more transparency and we're taking better care of our credit cards not that we use them a, a lot but we do have a few here um, and also the auditors once it's taken care of as well and we need to get this initiated so that we're in compliance with state law 
This is, uh, it's been mandated, so we don't have any choice as far as doing it. And all, all these credit cards are, are around their set limits, and they are locked under lock and key in safes. So it's not like any, everybody just run around and have to sign. There's paperwork to be filled out, exact amounts. But that's what we need to do is to get this on for next week's council agenda in order to get in compliance with them. Any questions? Just just wanted to note, as you mentioned, the uh, rise code, General Assembly requires this policy. Uh, the city infrequently uses its credit cards. The, a lot of these procedures are already followed. They just want to have a council adopted ordinance that meets state requirements. Everyone has to do it, so the auditors are telling us to get it done. Anything else? I motion to add ordinance 66 2019 to the May 13th <laughs> agenda. <laughs> Waving second and third readings. Do we need to wave here? Yeah. Yep. Might as well put it in place. I'll second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Ms. Whipke? Yes. Mr. Pilot? Yes. Mr. Kernan? Yes. Topics for the next work session. Is there anything anybody has that we need to make note of here? Uh, Mayor, do you have anything, any announcements uh, or anything? Yeah, I just have one. Just, I just want to announce that the Twin Brooks Garden Club, they have a plant sale on Saturday, May 18th, so that's kind of up and coming. Uh, and that'll be from 9 a.m. till 12 noon here at Columbia Woods Park. Uh, most plants are under $5, so come out and uh, have a great opportunity to get your plants for uh, plant sale this year and uh, help out the Twin Brooks Garden Club. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, hearing that, is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. Second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Adjourned. <laughs>